I want more black women to embrace softness. I want more black women to embrace luxury. I want more black women, honestly, to embrace bougie And I don't mean bougie like I'm a designer clothes, head to toe, and not in the materialistic kind of way, but in the self-care I just... Hi, everyone. I am Geretta. Welcome to another episode of the Sis Please podcast. And I'm Sada, your other coast. Hello, everyone. So today, we're going to be talking about this whole soft life trend that's been going on for about the past year or so and how it's affected us Black girl millennials. So if you're unfamiliar with the soft life trend, I think it's like a counterbalance to all these years of talk about hustle culture, grinding, toxic productivity. And it's mostly focused on many young people in particular, millennials, want to live a life of ease and comfort. So I didn't know this, but the soft life trend originated among the Nigerian influencer community. And I'll I did just, not know that either. Yeah, neither did I. In research for this episode, that's what I came across. But so what is the soft life? The term soft life or soft air describes living a life of enjoyment and comfort while limiting stress. With more than 378 million views and counting on TikTok, there's no shortage of content depicting the stress-free hashtag soft life popularized namely by Black women creators and influencers who are putting themselves first, and for good reason, in response to the hustle and girl boss culture of the 2010s. According to the transparent Black girl page, soft living is about Black women no longer accepting strength and work ethic as their sole identities. What do you think about that, sis? Yeah, I think it's interesting how this kind of came about, like, what 2021 so like this is during the time where we're still in the pandemic and Mm -hmm. i think a lot of people millennials included with us sitting in at home (laughs) for months on end working at jobs that we didn't like or living lives that we didn't want to live so it's not surprising that this trend came about and especially with black women i think so often we're told to do the most, even at the expense of our own bodies. I'm not surprised by the term. And I don't know, I always, when I think about terms, I compare it to like Disney movies or just <laughs> things. Like I, my brain works like that. But when I hear the gr- the, when I hear the word soft life, I'm thinking about Kuna Matata. No worries. <laughs> stress-free, get your martinis and be on the beach in luxury. But sometimes too, that can be a little bit co-opted. And I think that's what often people think about soft life, but I think it's just more all encompassing of knowing your boundaries, sticking to your boundaries and making sure that you're in alignment with yourself, whatever that looks like. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Like I mentioned before, many times I worked a job that burnt me the hell out So I guess in some ways I embodied soft life by being like, you know what, this is not for me and I'm not going to work myself to the bone. And even in this current position I'm in, like I'm not overexerting myself to the point where it's just like, I I feel burnt out. Like I feel like I'm in this point in my life where, yeah, I feel happier and I feel mellow and I'm not as angst as I was. So Yeah, I think like a lot of women really forsaking, hey, I'm not doing this girl boss thing. I'm not going to work myself to the bone and God forbid if anything were to happen to me, that's it. (laughs) Yeah. And when I was doing some research, people were talking about the soft life is really about prioritizing your joy first. It's about cultivating balance, self-awareness, intentionality, and joy. Because a lot of times in life, we just go. We're not even thinking about what we're doing. We're we're just constantly on the move, hustling, trying to check things off an infinite to-do list. And that, like you said, that can lead to a lot of burnout. And I think like with the soft life, we're also seeing complementary or related trends, like quiet quitting, even though people say they're not related, but people are like, you know what? I'm not doing the most at work because like you said, if I drop dead here at work, you guys will send send flowers and thoughts and prayers and that's it. Thoughts and prayers and postings next day. Exactly. We need somebody. (laughs) 
<laughs> you mean like job posting? Oh, we have a slot available. So I think yeah. people are like, I need to put myself first. But I think for me as an older millennial, the soft life means a little something different because I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm self-employed, I have my own freelance business. So I think living a softer life can be harder to achieve depending on where in life you are, especially mm. when you have personal and financial obligations to other people, to more than just yourself, because what you do affects other people. Yeah. But I think I like this whole conversation around the soft life and this idea about it because it requires this mind shift, mindset shift, like especially among us as Black women that struggle does not have to be the default. Our existence Never. does not have to be struggle. And I think especially growing up first generation, African American, Liberian American, we watched our African immigrant parents for whom struggle was the default. It was the reality. There was yeah. not a soft life mindset, but a it was a hard, hard ass life. life. <laughs> hard life mindset. For our African immigrant parents they had a hard life mindset and a hard life reality. And they always worked themselves to the bone because they had no other choice. So we've had this ingrained work hard mentality in us that we really need to deprogram. As someone who's older and has certain responsibilities, sometimes, honestly, I wouldn't mind being a lady who lunches or being gently employed. <laughs> like you have a job, but it's low stress and it doesn't make or break whether or not <laughs> you can pay your bills. And I know this statement is probably like setting feminism back a generation, but I feel like women, especially black women, we've always been in the position where we had to be emotional caregivers, physical caregivers, and balance multiple responsibilities at the same time, all the time. And I think sometimes what's expected of us, not even asked of us, is too much. Like, how many Black women do you know have the option to not work outside the home, who can regularly volunteer just to pass the time, or who can solely focus on the job of being a mother and a wife? Yeah, not many. Not many. Yeah, no, you said a whole lot that I want to like decompress because in going back to setting feminism back, I used to crap so bad when I was at Mount Holyoke because it was a very like proactive feminist college, LGBTQ friendly. And I remember there was some girl that I was friends with who you're a change maker. You want to make a change in the world after you graduate from such an institution like this. And I remember her saying, I would not mind being a housewife. I'm like, what? You don't mind being a housewife after your parents have paid that much money for you to go to school? Now, at 30, I understand what she's talking about. Because so? just like you said, like, you want to work. Like, obviously, yeah, you want to work. But it you working isn't dependent. It's like a, a volunteer activity, kind of. If I got married and my man was making all the dough, I'm going to just keep it a buck and I could just work on the side and do my little projects like that seems like the life, but there is a cost. But no, I just, I, mm -hmm. when you were talking about that, that's something that I thought about. And then also too, just with like black women having to work so much and like how we had, especially growing up, like all we saw our mom was work. <laughs> and even like at when her mid 60s, she's still working, even though she decreased her hours. But mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why it was so hard for me to even like deprogram and leave my job or wait for me to leave my job late in the game was just like, oh my God, I am a hard worker. This job needs me. Just putting all these expectations on myself that I was like, damn, that's too much to carry. Because at the end of the day, once I left, shit, like they found somebody else. True. I think just doing what's best for you and knowing that about yourself is really important. Yeah. Speaking of seeing our mom work hard, like you said, she's still to this day, even though she could retire and be fine. She doesn't do Seriously. that. We have an aunt who I nicknamed, my nickname for her is Double So, because yes. the last name So, and Double, because she does a double like six to seven days a week. for That 16 hour shift, six to seven days a week, that is not sustainable, but somehow she's been doing it for years, I think that's what's in her mind to do. Like when she has a day off, it's I should be at work. <laughs> For real. <laughs> you know, Ain't no days off. Hustle. 
Yeah. So I think it's just tricky too. Like it, like I said, I wouldn't mind regularly volunteering to pass the time if I had that option. But also now with the situation I'm in being self-employed, like some of the professional organizations that I'm in, they've asked me to volunteer for stuff. Is I don't have time to work for free. I got to work for pay. <laughs> like yeah, in, in no, certain respects, you. volunteering and doing some of this non-paid work is a privilege. Yeah, so, no, most definitely. Again, that's why I'm jealous of some of the people that I knew from college who were well off to begin with, they got that F you money. Mm -hmm. Their parents got that F you money. So even if they didn't really have a sustainable career, they can fall back on that F you money and do what they want to do. Just the way that things are in this country with systemic racism and institutional ra racism, we have to work hard to get not even half. And just wage inequality too. Yeah. You know, people yeah. have to work multiple jobs just to make a living. It's crazy. And I, being self-employed, I personally suffer from toxic productivity. It's like, mm. I need to maximize my time to maximize my earnings, but I rationalize it. Like I'd rather be toxically productive for my own benefit than for an employer's benefit. At least all, I feel that. all the output is for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause these jobs will leave you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I know we've had conversations like this and this is similar, but, and I think I said this in a previous episode, like not everybody is meant to be a boss. And I don't know about you, sis. There is also with this soft life mantra and I think, again, I think because of the pandemic, people are just like, this job that I'm working at is not giving. But I have seen like just an influx of get your money, sis, get your <laughs> paper, be an entrepreneur. And it's okay. That's not for everybody too. If you work an honorable nine to five where you clock in and clock out, that is honorable too. Again, I don't feel like everybody should be an entrepreneur. Everybody should be a boss. I think you can do things that are honorable that make money where you don't have to Breast have a business. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think knowing what's best for you, because again, I've seen a lot of people with my business, this, my business, that, but it's, you don't got good customer service though. <laughs> what are we talking about? But anyway, that's a, that's another <laughs> aside. Going back though, mm -hmm. you did say something along the lines of women feeling conditioned to have not it all together, but just in terms of having our to-do list and always being on the go. Why do you think that is? I think it's just ingrained in us, especially over the last two decades or so. I think I would say in the 1950s, we were more inside the home. Our work was focused inside the home. But now as life has gotten more expensive, you have more two income households. So women now are working both inside the home and outside the home. So there's yeah. always these dual responsibilities to balance. And we always feel like we're not doing it. Like we have to compromise one for the other. Or we're being judged based on our performance in one and then based on our performance in in another. And it's like, there's never this, if you're failing at home, then you're succeeding at work. If you're succeeding at work, then you feel like you're failing at home. But like I said, there's this infinite to-do list that a lot of us have that we feel like we can never get things crossed off because things are always put on that to-do list because hmm. of the multiple roles we juggle. Like I said, wife, mother, employee, student, caregiver, financial caregiver, physical caregiver. It's like so many things that women are responsible for. And it makes this idea of having a soft life so difficult to achieve, taking time for yourself, self-care, so difficult to achieve. And can I ask you like a personal question? Because like you're eight years older than me, mm -hmm. like you're much more established in your career. And I hear the term, you can't have it all like in terms of having a sustainable business, career, wife, mom, all those things that you listed, do you feel personally that you quote unquote have it all? You know no. what I mean? No, and I don't know anyone who does, even if it outwardly looks like it, the person does. I like the phrase like you can have it all, but not <laughs> at the same time. And mm. I think that's true. You have to sacrifice. You have to make sacrifices at certain points in your life to get certain things. So I've never strived to have it all. I never believed in that notion. And that those kinds of things can lead to burnout, hustle culture, toxic productivity, when you're just trying 
to accomplish, like trying to be an over overachiever in every aspect of your life is a recipe for failure, <laughs> the recipe to underachieve. Yeah, no, most definitely. I've, I think going back to just the way that mommy's mindset was like, it was ingrained in us to work hard. And she's always proud of her daughters and her children for achieving things that she hadn't achieved, even though she's accomplished a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> coming to the States. Where was I going with that? But no, I think very similar to you. And I don't know if you're similar, sis. Like I definitely had, I still have that overachievement mindset. And I don't know if it's just based on the way that we're raised or just taking pride in my work, but just always wanting to be the best, do the best. But I think as of recent, I was just like, what, at what cost? Yeah. You know what I mean? I can do the best that I can and that might not be enough. And it's just, okay, like taking a step back and what's best for me. And I remember having a conversation with one of my friends the other day and she was just like, you seem a little lighter. You're just enjoying yourself. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, I'm less stressed. And she was like, I think for once, like your job, even though like I've been in education for over a decade, like I love the students that I've worked with. I've loved the organizations that I've worked with and for. And she's, I think this is like the one time in your life where like your job isn't your whole life <laughs> and, and you like, know why it is probably because you're not anyone's boss right now you're yes. responsible for yourself and your contributions so it yeah. gives you the flexibility to not have work be your whole life you yeah. can focus on other areas of your life yeah um, yeah yeah, no. And I think that, and then also in other jobs too, like, I think sometimes it was just like the stress, depending on people that I was working with, even before my last job, where it's just, again, this mindset of just over needing to perform. And I think now I'm like, again, I do the best that I can. And that's that. <laughs> I'm not going to kill myself. That's true. And I think too, with this whole soft life trend, things I've been seeing, particularly among black women is this, I don't know if you've seen this, but the black girl luxury move movement, there are some yes. book groups around, I think it's brown girl luxury is one of them, but there was this essence article I read and I thought it made an important point that luxury means different things to different people. It doesn't mean just sure. flexing and flossing and spending a lot of money unnecessarily. You can live luxuriously and be stay within your means. <laughs> I'm not yeah. trying to tell people to spend like $5,000 on a purse or a bracelet or whatever. But I yeah. think for me, luxury means cultivating great and memorable experiences instead of just buying a specific material thing. Like I have this philosophy for hotel, for vacations and hotels. Like when I go on vacation, I need to stay in a hotel that is better than the accommodations I live in day to day. <laughs> like for me, a vacation is a time to treat yourself, not to yeah. cheap out. So I prefer yeah. when I stay in a hotel for an extended period, I'm talking like four or five days or more, that it be a certain caliber of hotel, a four or five star hotel. That's what I prefer when I go on vacation. If I was going on a business trip or a little weekend stuff or overnight, even overnight, if it's an anniversary or my birthday, I want to stay in a nice hotel. But so that to me is one way I treat myself. And also I don't stay in, a, I don't go anywhere that often. Like we yeah. take maybe one big vacation a year and then maybe our anniversary or one of our birthdays will stay overnight somewhere if we have childcare. Yeah. But I'm not trying to work hard all year. Then you go on vacation, you're trying to penny pinch and not enjoy the fruits of your labor. I don't understand that. So for me, that's one area I like to, to splurge a little bit and treat myself. I've never stayed in an Airbnb maybe once, like 10 years mm. ago, because yeah. this is why. I don't want to have to clean, make my bed while I'm on vacation. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's fair. I don't, it's like, why am I going to, I do all this stuff, shit at home on a regular basis. Why am I going to go rent someone else's house? And now I have to make my bed and clean dishes in the sink. So that's For why real. I prefer to stay in a hotel where they yeah. just pick up after me every day. I love coming in. You leave in the morning, you go out, you come back, your bed, you come back to a nicely made bed and a clean bathroom and you didn't have to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I feel you. That's yeah, what sometimes, I want. And sometimes the Airbnbs be as more expensive as the hotels. It's like shit. Like again, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think for me, again, I feel like I'm 
slowly like evolving to, to having this soft life, but I think just staying in tune with my boundaries. I didn't tell you this, sis, but I graduated from therapy, so I'm no longer in therapy. My therapist oh, nice. said that I have the tools to- um, I didn't know you could graduate from therapy. I thought it's something that you keep evolving and progressing with. I think we just came to a mutual decision. I got the tools that I need. And if I ever needed to reach out to her, that I could. But I agreed. It was bittersweet. But I think given that I was doing the work for two and a half years, just keeping that in mind, like all the tools that I've learned and just making sure that I'm staying too, true to myself and acting the boundaries that I want, creating like sustainable relationships with people that I care about when I feel like I'm wronged in a certain way, just again, having the tools to communicate that effectively. I think something that I need to start doing too is just like having vacations once a year as well. Like I think mm -hmm. the last vacation I was on like was two years ago. So we need just to get a sister trip, even if it's just like a long weekend, like a Friday. Yeah, that, that would be dope. Sunday, that would be like that. Yeah. And it's so nice because I think that's a good, important point you bring up about therapy. It's giving you the tools to enact boundaries, which I think is important if you want to live a softer life. You need to know what your boundaries are, what you're willing to accept and what yeah. you're not and what you're willing to compromise on. And I think once you have that clarified in your own mind, you can say, you know what, these are the things I'm going to integrate into my life to live a softer life, to calm yeah. down a little bit, to not be as stressed, to remove stress from my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with that too, I've been telling y'all that I've been working on my fitness journey. So I'm looking at myself in the camera, I see my neck thinning out and stuff like that. Um, but something that I've been doing too is working out religiously. Mm -hmm. And I shout out to my trainer in 2020 who taught me the fundamental skills of like weightlifting and stuff like that. Cause before I was just doing whatever in the gym, but now with his guidance back then, now I'm in the gym, I have a plan, I know what I'm doing. And it feels good to like lift and work out and it's just and take such... care of your body. Yeah, mentally and, and physically. Yeah. And it's done in the month and a half that I've been doing it, I've seen huge results in my body, but just like my overall wellness. Mm -hmm. So just keeping that up. And I think that also just aids with mental clarity as well. And I think it also helps too, because I don't know what just clicked for me, sis, because again, I have similar to you. And I know we talked about this in previous episodes. It's not the working out for me. It's the eating. <laughs> but I realized I'm like, I cannot work hard as hell in the gym and eat like shit. <laughs> like, yeah, but it just clicked for me of no, no, like you're feeding the gains. You have to eat healthy. And like, I've been seeing really good results. So that's something that I've been doing to create a softer life of just, and again, with my new job too. I'm working once, once it's five o'clock, like I'm going to the gym or early in the morning before eight, nine o'clock, I'm going to the gym. So just mm -hmm. having those routines that really help me create a softer life. Yeah. I want more black women to do that. Whatever that means to you. I want more black women to embrace softness. I want more black women to embrace luxury. I want more black women, honestly, to embrace bougie And I don't mean bougie like um, designer clothes, head to toe, and not in the materialistic kind of way, but in the self-care, I deserve this sort of way is what I mean when I say I want black women to embrace bougie Because in that Essence article, it also talked about sprinkles of luxury into your put sprinkles of luxury into your life treat yourself yeah. Yeah. and that can mean like I said before different things to different people but I think it's let go as much of you can as this of the scarcity mindset because so often we'll have the time or be able to afford to do certain things and we talk ourselves out of it we make excuses mm. we can make every excuse in the book as to why not to do something. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just, especially as women, we do that all the time. We're often scared to spend money or scared to spend our time on something because we're like, oh, it's a waste. I have so many other things to do. But like when I'm talking about sprinkles of luxury, it can be like, okay, you're starting your fitness journey. Buy those great pair of running shoes that are maybe top of the line that maybe last year you're like, no, I'm not going to buy. It's not that it's too expensive. I don't really need it. I can just go with the basic. But if you're trying to focus on your overall wellness journey and prevent injury, splurge on the nice running shoes. Like, yeah, you know, the treat, nice little clothes. Yeah. Treat yourself to a facial every month or every Friday, take an hour long bath to wrap up your work week. Tell your spouse or your partner, you got dinner and bath 
for the kids, I'm going to go take an hour long bath every Friday. That's what I need to wrap up my work week. So you got this. Let me take this time for myself and I'm going to soak in the bathtub with my bath salts and listen to a good audio book or podcast like this one. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, no, yeah, no. (laughs) Yeah, funny. No, and I think because I am single and I have no kids and I feel like there's no excuse for me to not do that either. Like I have a little yeah. bit more flexibility. And, and, and please think, embrace it and enjoy it now while you can still Oh, can. I'm embracing it. I'm loving it. Hey. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're saying there's some things you don't do now that you could take full oh. advantage of being single in your 30s and free. I'm you free. It. Live. You got to live for all of us. I'm living <laughs> it. I'm living it. No, I'm serious. Like I feel, again, compared to my 20s and early 30s, I'm like, Oh, I ain't got no kids. I ain't got no spouse. I could do whatever I wanted to without any care in the world. So I agree. Live your best life. Treat yourself because we deserve it. Yeah. And I remember overhearing my dad one day, this was years ago, say to my uncle, you shouldn't wait until you're old to start treating yourself good. And I feel like that is so true. Like, especially in our community, we we think, oh, someday I can do this. And I'm just glad, like when I see my mom or our mom now, that when she was first coming to this country and raising us, it was a harder life because she had, it was survival mode, but now she's living a softer life. And I yeah, really- Yeah, going on vacations. Going buying on her re- retirement car, her fancy luxury <laughs> retirement car, even though she's nowhere near retirement. Yeah, going on vacation. She's taking Zumba. She's focusing. She's in her me season. And I really yeah. love to see that for her, that softness in her life because she's been through a lot and she's not waiting until she can't move or and really enjoy the quality of life she deserves to start doing things. She's like taking meaningful steps now to make that a part of her life, like going yeah. on vacation every year, which she never used to do. Yeah, no, most definitely. And I think also too, with a lot of black women being single and unpartnered, we all we got. <laughs> so you might as well take that vacation, take that trip. That's sisterhood. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really important because when God flips, when it's all said and gone, like, how are you going to be remembered? Are you going to be remembered for that person that's just, they work themselves to death, <laughs> but they never enjoy themselves? Yeah, like that to me, that's not a well fulfilled life. Like, you want to work hard, but at the same time, you want to enjoy your money too that's and make it work true. for you. The things you said, Gerada, really resonated with me. And I'm going to take meaningful action to live a softer life or integrate sprinkles of luxury into my life. It was funny because in October, I think you know this, I have a business coach and he had a retreat in Charleston, South Carolina. He had this exercise, which I thought was really powerful. He printed out a huge 2023 calendar. And he Mm. had each of us, the participants, look at the calendar throughout the year and schedule our life priorities first and block off time for things that were important in our lives and schedule work around it. So for me, I had Fridays blocked off like for my flex Mm. day or try to just have a four day work week, maybe go and do a facial once every six weeks or something like on a Friday, like that, those yeah. kinds of things, or have lunch with my husband at least one Friday a month to take that time from our work day to have lunch together. And I think that's such a powerful exercise because so often we do the opposite. We yeah. focus on work first and then we schedule our life around it. But I think also it's important to know like the soft life isn't a permanent state because like if you live in too soft a life it turns into a hard life you know what yeah. i'm saying well, if you can't pay your bills and you can't you're not keeping up with your responsibility so i think it has to be a balance but it's really about a mindset shift and identifying what's important to you and what your boundaries are and then taking it from there